I don't know if you're like me, but if you are, then you're completely fascinated by the complex number line. And if you stick with me throughout this video, I'm gonna show you how complex numbers might revolutionize the way that artificial intelligence systems are built. And I've always had this sort of gut instinct that the reason the human brain still seems really special compared to even the best AI systems out there is because these 80 billion neurons connect to their neighbors in true three-dimensional space. There's just something that's kind of inefficient, it feels like, about lists of arrays, numbers that describe things in multidimensional space. Now, it still works, and because it's massively parallel and you can build kind of supercomputers that would never rival the size of a human brain, you can do a truly amazing things, and I'm sure we're on that path. However, it just feels like the true three-dimensional connectivity allows so much more consciousness or so much more learning to happen in such smaller amounts of space. So when you really break a computer system down to its logic gates, you're getting ones and zeros and or operations that are just stacking on top of each other to do basic mathematics, to make something that's Turing complete. But for me, it was like such an aha realization moment when you find out that complex numbers are describing numbers, but with an entirely new dimension. It's more like an XY coordinate system instead of a simple number line. It's going from one dimension to two dimensions. So instead of having like a ruler where you're jumping back and forth based on the measurements, it's an entire sheet of paper and you have so many more ways to describe whatever it is that you're trying to describe. And my guess would be there's more ways to learn from less data. And when I think about a one dimensional number line in terms of quantities, it certainly works. You can say that there's three, four or five cookies on a plate, but it's important to realize that that's also just a way of confining all of the other ways to talk about math into something that works for quantities, but it necessarily isn't that. And that's why when this research paper hit my inbox this morning, I was really intrigued. The paper is called Theory and Implementation of a Complex Valued Neural Network. So to contrast that from a real valued neural network, meaning real numbers, the numbers that have an integer at the beginning, a decimal point, and then a description of how precise it can be, which is how all the trillion parameters that make up ChatGPT are actually stored right now, made me think that potentially you could use an order of magnitude less nodes to get the same kind of description if it's actually storing those weights in a complex number. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. No, but that's why this is really interesting to me. Like in some sense, a long list of arrays that describe something in a multidimensional space might be like adding more and more dimensions to something. So why would it really matter if we use a complex number instead of just a real valued number? But maybe that actually holds more description. And that's what I'm trying to explore in this paper. Or maybe it's just a special use case where this kind of architecture really helps when an AI system is trying to learn something that has to do with waves or something similar to that. And of course, anybody who loves imaginary numbers probably also hates that they're called imaginary numbers because there's literally nothing imaginary about them. They're a great way to describe a two dimensional space, which is really what numbers are describing in the first place. Imaginary numbers are just what you get when certain numbers are squared in such a way that they should have a negative result. They're just in a space that stops being on that number line and easily describable. And actually some of the best intuition I got for this didn't come when I was still in school. It was from a YouTube channel called Three Blue One Brown, which you definitely, you probably already know about them, but you definitely need to check them out if not. And as a reminder, complex numbers are just numbers with two components, one that describes on the X axis where something is and the other one on the Y. So it correlates to like two dimensional space, even though it still works the way algebra works. So an algebraic way of dealing with a Cartesian coordinate system essentially. But now enter the the Complex Valued Neural Network, or the CVNN for short. This is a new type of neural network with a ton of potential as opposed to the real valued neural networks or just neural networks, basically. So all of those incredible weights that Facebook is releasing with their models or OpenAI is keeping to themselves are descriptors that are using a ton of actual single real valued positions. But in this paper, these authors both have implemented and theoretically shown that there might be a real use case for complex numbers in these systems. Now, this is kind of one of those things where if you have the right industry, it might work better. So they think that some of the best impact they could have would probably be in signal communication healthcare, deep fake detection, and industrial maintenance. And that's because these CVNNs are particularly good at handling phasic data. So you can read in the paper how the math is actually working. And some of this stuff's just way over my head right now, so I can't really break it down, but complex pooling layers, 
complex upsampling layers. They're trying to think about all the different components that you'd normally find in a regular AI architecture and think about how would that look in one of these complex number systems and where could the efficiencies be if we replaced it? And this is code that you can actually run. So if you wanna get Python, bring the Anaconda science package down or just throw it in a Jupyter notebook, go ahead and play with it and try to get your head around why they built it the way they did. Now, another important thing to note is this paper was built on top of an idea that came from a different paper. And this paper is actually called Generalized Backpropagation et tu de cas orthogonality, which is a French phrase that just means case study. And the reason why this paper matters is because it discusses an improvement that can be made to neural networks using a new geometry, Romanian geometry, actually. So Romanian geometry allows for curved space, the kind of like paper on a beach ball thing with any number of dimensions so it can be three, four, five, or six, and it actually includes Euclidean geometry as one of its special cases when everything is flat. So it fits into the bigger one. But it seems like the main thing that you're reinventing is the idea of backpropagation. So when you learn something, all the ways that you would normally adjust all those parameters can be thought of in a completely different way. And interestingly, the researchers said even if this is something that kind of catches on in the big companies, Meta, Facebook, Microsoft, OpenAI, Google, all those companies decide that this should be a line of research, it still seems like having a breakthrough in CVNNs where they can actually compute something in much more efficient scale than what's out there right now was probably two or three years away. It might even be more like a three to eight year time frame before we get significant progress in this kind of an architecture. And they probably won't pour a lot into this because even though this is interesting and might be quite an improvement over the current system, there is all those analog 3D systems that people are trying to jump to also, or quantum computing is starting to play into the picture. So maybe even though this would be an improvement, it's better to just leapfrog the whole idea of using complex numbers. But the awesome thing about actually implementing it in the first place is that they uploaded it to GitHub and there's now a repository and a library for building CVNNs that you can implement today. Now the authors wanted to build on something like TensorFlow or PyTorch, but they actually had to just go from the ground up and build a new library. And the paper talks about all the problems they had when they were trying to implement it on top of other open source projects, but because it's just so different at its core, it really needed its own base. So the new library is called CVNN if you want to implement it, and it's the first to natively support complex number types and have a framework for training AI on. So if you want to just look through the documentation, see some of the examples, you can come to this URL, it's linked below. And here it can talk you through downloading Anaconda, using pip, which is a way to install the library library, using GitHub in general, but also a whole bunch of important information for just getting it up and running and trying to understand what they're doing. So, you know, if this interests you, go for it. But most important, I just wanted to shed some light on the idea that we could even take AI in this direction, that this is a new type of architecture that somebody out there is actually thinking about and might really be a game changer. Now, if you wouldn't mind, you can move that mouse in two dimensions up to that subscribe button. Help me get to my next goal, 9,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching.